All right, here we go. Do I have to do this subject? Really? Come on, like you can't get one of the other guys to do it. <laughs> okay, okay. One, two, three. <sighs> Since the dawn of time, Hollywood studios have been attempting to make live-action adaptations of anime. The results have been, for the most part, disastrous. The movie-going public has been subjected to some of the worst adaptations of anything ever! Sorry. But why exactly is it so difficult to adapt anime? Why is it that fans seem to despise almost all of these live-action anime movies? I could tell you why, I could tell you why. Casual anime fans and diehard weebs alike cannot agree on who the best girl is in anything. But what they can agree on is that most of these movies just suck. Sorry again. I'll maintain my composure now. I'm Zane McCown, welcome to Cosplay FTW, your number one source for the latest lowdown on anime and manga news, updates, and analysis. Sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and before we get into this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Before we jump in, a quick disclaimer. In this video, we will be primarily referencing American adaptations of anime series into films. We already know that there have been some pretty decent Japanese live action adaptations. So, we'll center our commentary in Western media, and with that out of the way, let's dive in. Alright, I think that the biggest difficulty with adapting anime for live action is simply the fundamental difference between animation and film. Anime, believe it or not, is not real. You might think it's real, you might wish it was real, but it's not real. It's drawings. All of it is drawings. The characters, the backgrounds, the action, everything. Everything in anime is made of the same substance, so to speak. Fantasy and sci-fi elements are made of the exact same stuff as the ordinary things like the character shoes and buildings. This may seem obvious, but it might be the most crucial reason why most of these adaptations don't work. The reason why anime and animation more generally is so well suited for fantastical things is because they fit perfectly in with everything else in the world. It's seamless. Live action, on the other hand, is always having to come up with new visual trickery to create fantasy sci-fi elements. CGI is constantly improving, but it's just not seamless in the way that animation is. Your brain can detect CGI pretty much instantly. Even if it's really good CGI, it's just not the same substance as the actors. It doesn't quite fit into the world of the movie. Practical effects, although often better, suffer from the same problem. Because of this difference, things that work in an anime just don't work the same in a live action adaptation. This just does not look the same as this. Now obviously, this is kind of cheating, since Dragon Ball Evolution is widely recognized as being one of, if not the worst anime adaptations of all time. But still, you get what I'm trying to say here. CGI and other effects are ultimately an attempt to do something that the animation does naturally. This though, is connected to another major hurdle, which is casting. Anime adaptations seem to be almost impossible to cast right with the possible exception of Willem Dafoe as Ryuk in Death Note. I don't care who knows, I love that cast. I remember as a kid seeing Willem Dafoe playing as Green Goblin in Spider-Man. In that movie, he does this part where he's talking to a mirror, and when he talks to that mirror, you can see his facial expressions are perfect for Ryuk's face. And so whenever it was announced that he was, you know, going to be in that role, I thought, finally, finally, we're doing something right. But then, you know, Death Note happened. And, uh, oof. Anyways, other than that, I'm not sure there's ever been a casting decision for one of these movies that most fans have agreed was good. In fact, casting is perhaps the number one thing that's argued about endlessly on the internet. Nobody ever likes the casting, and it leads to endless debate and pointless internet battles. 
In order to figure out why this is, we spent years working with highly sophisticated facial recognition AI programs. And after processing over 10,000 anime characters and actors, we came to the following conclusion. Anime characters don't look like real people. They just don't. This is why they're basically impossible to cast in a satisfying way. They don't look like normal humans. And they're not supposed to. Well, maybe except for the Flowers of Evil. The reality is that there are no actors who look like your favorite anime characters. Well, with, with the exception of Willem Dafoe as Ryuk. Anyways, I've seen a lot of people criticize the casting of John Cho in the upcoming Netflix, Cowboy Bebop. While they probably could have found someone who looked more like Spike, the reality is that nobody really looks like Spike. And Spike is definitely on the easier side of the casting problem. Good luck finding a 3D person who looks like Naruto or Midoriya, let alone whatever Moe Blob slice of life show the kids are watching these days. I can't wait for people to complain about the terrible casting when Netflix tries to adapt Love Live or k -On, or something like that. The attempt to remedy this problem in the live action Alita movie resulted in a bizarre CGI abomination that hopefully will never be repeated. The other difficulty with casting is that you're not just replacing a character, you're replacing an actor. I think with animation people often don't think about the actor behind the character because you can't actually see them. But a character's voice actor is an integral part of the character. A quick example of this, in my opinion, and I know that I jump to this subject pretty often, is Mark Hamill as Joker. And don't get me wrong, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker is phenomenal. And we have had some great portrayals of the villain. But it's hard to say that any of the live adaptations of the Joker visually represented what you saw in the comics. And then when we actually had the Batman animated series, you had Mark Hamill as Joker, and it was perfect. His voice is iconic as the Joker. So for me especially, I tend to look at and hold up Mark Hamill's Joker as the superior Joker. But that's because live action can just never replace the fantastical world of animation. Voice actors might not have as much creative freedom as other actors because nobody ever sees their physical gestures and facial expressions. But a voice alone can carry a huge amount of personality and emotion. I think the best way to realize this is just to think about how different the English dub of an anime is from the original. This is because they aren't just replacing a language, they're replacing an actor. Imagine if they remade Pirates of the Caribbean and replaced Johnny Depp with Chris Pratt. It wouldn't work at all. The character is too closely tied to the actor. I think a lot of anime is like this. Even if anime voice actors aren't typically known by anyone other than the most hardcore weebs. The other problem with real humans playing anime characters is that there's something about it that always just seems off. And you don't even need to watch the live action anime adaptations to realize this. All you need to do is go to a school's anime club or go to an anime convention. If you do either of these things, you will most likely have a lot of fun. However, you will also inevitably see someone acting like an anime character and coming across as a bit of a weirdo. You can watch girls on TikTok act like Moe Blobs to witness the same thing that I'm describing here. And mind you, it works for what they're trying to achieve on TikTok, just not for real life. Just like anime characters don't look like real people, they also typically don't act like real people. And by that, I don't mean that real people don't have magic powers or whatever. I mean that anime characters have exaggerated expressions, mannerisms, and speech patterns. These aren't quirks that you can just remove for your adaptation. They're an integral part of what makes these characters feel like the character. And these things are basically impossible to replicate in live action. Another reason live action adaptations usually don't work out is because Hollywood producers will always try to Americanize them. We can only assume this is because they want to play it safe, and it's understandable to an extent, since they're spending millions of dollars, but it doesn't usually make for something that's very good or interesting, or even true to the story. Taking a Japanese story out of Japan is just as hard as taking an animated story out of the animation. A good example, if not the best example of this, is the Netflix version of Death Note, which is set in Seattle. 
The Netflix Death Note had a lot of other problems, mind you, and was sort of a loose adaptation. But it's still the best example. Why exactly was it set in America? Well, it's a lot cheaper for Americans to make a movie in America, for one. You can also use the established Hollywood pool of actors rather than going and trying to find Japanese people. Then again, it's really just a bit lazy and no excuse because there happen to be quite a few Japanese American actors and actresses. Sadly, producers tend to be scared of making something that people will see as being foreign, even if the source material itself is foreign. I'm pretty sure that they think if they had made a Death Note movie set in Japan with Japanese people, you know, like the actual source material, people would think it was a foreign movie and wouldn't watch it. Only nerds actually watch foreign movies after all. But this is pretty flawed logic, since the target audience are anime fans, and who these same people would call nerds to begin with. This is actually one of the problems with anime adaptations that I'm sort of optimistic will change. At the 2019 Oscars, Parasite won Best Picture, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and Best International Feature Film. It was the first ever non-English language movie to win Best Picture. Not only was it loved by the Hollywood Academy, but it was a commercial success as well, making $259 million at the box office despite having a tiny budget of just $15 million. Obviously, Korea is not Japan. In fact, I would be careful not to confuse the two if there are any natives of either country around, especially natives old enough to remember World War II. But even if it's not the same thing as anime, it might have proved Hollywood execs that a non-English language film set outside America can succeed. I think this could be good news for future anime adaptations. This gets into the question of why live action anime adaptations are even made. I'm not a Hollywood producer, and I don't know any Hollywood producers. Although I did have a run-in with Dan Schneider at a Foot Locker one time. <laughs> But I don't think these people make anime adaptations because they're huge weebs who just love anime. They make these adaptations for the same reasons they adapt books and make prequels, sequels, spin-offs, spin-ons, etc. of old movies. It's because it's always a safer bet to make a movie based on something people already recognize. Something with a built-in audience. Unfortunately, this means that the anime that get adapted are going to be the most popular, not the most adaptable. I actually think there are plenty of anime that could probably have decent live action adaptations. Kaiji for one, but Dragon Ball and Pokemon are just not one of them. The most popular anime tend to be the ones that have the most difficulty dealing with all the problems I've already covered. Heavy fantasy or sci-fi elements, highly stylized, lots of anime specific tropes, and impossible casting. What does the future of live action anime hold? Well, I'm sure by now everyone has seen the trailer for Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop seems like it could be a good candidate for a Hollywood adaptation, since it was partially inspired by American things like westerns. But you can't really judge things by a trailer. I'll never make that mistake again. After I got hyped, for Prometheus because of that cool siren in the trailer and then the movie is just idiots dying in space for two hours. Uh, sorry. Netflix is also working on a live action of One Piece, something which seems way less adaptable. Lionsgate announced a Naruto movie five years ago, but it appears to be trapped in production hell. Sony is making a live action One Punch Man, which I think has more potential. I'm always hesitant to judge things before they even come out, but I don't see any of these inherent problems going away anytime soon. Personally, I would much rather see Hollywood make their own original stories than try to make awkward 3D versions of anime. Maybe Japan should teach Hollywood a lesson by making 2D versions of Hollywood like Indiana Jones or Star Wars. <laughs> well, that's been our take on anime adaptations and why Hollywood struggles so much with them. Do you have any points you'd like to add? Perhaps you disagree altogether. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 
And as always, be sure to support the channel with a like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. It really helps keep us going. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Ad time. <sighs> this year's almost over, and I'm really glad that life is almost returning to normal. Cons are back. I can see my friends, do cosplays together, and go gift shopping for the holidays. But where will I get my cosplays and gifts? I wonder if Santa knows my size. Santa? No! I'm Santa Cosplay Bear. And don't worry, buddy. SCV has you covered. Just go to cosplayftw.com where you will find hundreds of cosplays, wigs, and props, and everything you need. Whether you're a content creator, or you want to give someone a very special gift. And they ship worldwide. Thank you, Cosplay Bear. You and Cosplay FTW have made this the best holiday. End of ad.